Welcome everybody to Mariel Talks Pop. I'm your host, Mariel Desori, and I'm so glad that three months after I have my first, my, my latest interview, I'm back with the one and only Ricky Rebel. How are you, my hey. friend? Hey, Mariel. Nice to meet you. It's so nice to meet you. I am so happy to have you on my show. I am so thankful that you agreed. So welcome. Oh, you're sweet. Yeah. So, so uh, how, I, just got, how... I just got back from a show. I was, I was uh, doing a club gig. And I got mm -hmm. home literally at, like at 4 a.m. So that's why I'm a little, Whoa. yeah, yeah, <laughs> the way I look right now. <laughs> but it is, it, no, you know, it's worry. a rock star vibe. Yeah. But you look great. I mean, I can't believe you still look like you're 17. <laughs> oh my God, I love you so much. <laughs> Even after being up <laughs> no, till 4 a.m. No, I mean, oh, you look great. <laughs> I have really good um, people in my life who, um, who have come in like skincare wise, who adore me. Uh, her name is Michelle Fisher, a loud in medical aesthetics. Shout out to her in Virginia. And uh, she's one of my best friends and she knows a lot about skincare and she taught me a lot about it. And uh, mm -hmm. I'm just one of those guys, like I never really liked to party even during those times when we were on tour with the pop group. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk a lot about that. I, I, I didn't like to party. I didn't like to uh, drink, do drugs. Um, so I think that's why I, that's great. I, I still look the way I look. You, you know. see people, that's what you need to do. Follow, uh, Ricky's <laughs> line. Mm -hmm. So you can still look young. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And I love fitness too. So that, that helps. I love, I really love working out and I'm a big sleeper too. I mean, do mm -hmm. you like, do you like to sleep? Yes. <laughs> I find so much pleasure. I find so much pleasure yes. in sleeping. So, yeah. Well, those are very good tips so everybody can still maintain yourself young. Um, now, uh, you've been, Ricky, in the music business for a lot of years, over 25 years, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think, well, I mean, I started 11, 21, 31, 41, almost 31 years now. I mean, I started when I was 11 years old. Wow. So, so yeah, yeah, it's been quite some time. It's yeah, I, got my, time. I booked and, my first... Well, my first movie, I, I sang on Apollo 13 when yes. I was like th like 13 or 14. And um, yeah, so I started young. Yes. And then you joined uh, No Authority, which was one of the um, young boy bands from the late 90s. Tell us about yeah. it. You guys were signed to Michael Jackson's label. Yeah, we were. Yeah. It was one of the craziest uh, days of my life to find out that the Michael that they were talking about at Sony was actually Michael Jackson because they kept saying like, oh, well, Michael wants to hear the record. Oh, Michael likes this, but he wants that. And and it was like, oh, some executive at, at Sony named Michael, he, he wants more photos or more videos or more content or he wants mm -hmm. to hear the song a certain way. But it's like it was they, when they finally told us, oh, it's Michael Jackson. Like it freaked me out. Wow! I was like, I "Are you kidding me?" Because Michael uh, Jackson has always been one of my musical heroes. I know. Yes, definitely. Yeah. I mean, I, I bet it was a big shock for you guys. And um, then it all happened. Rodney Jerkins produced your first album, um, "Keep On," yeah, uh, which uh, spawned several uh, hits, including "Don't Stop." Uh, tell us about the recording of that first album. How was it? How was uh, the videos, the songs, who chose the songs? Did you guys uh, wrote any of the songs? Uh, not on that record. The first record, we mainly worked with Ronnie Jerkins people. Sean, mm -hmm. Sean, uh, I forget his last name. Sean did a lot of the um, writing as, as long as, as well as another guy named Daffy, I think. Um, mm -hmm. What they did, they came with a little tape recorder and they would play the track and they would just start humming along and singing and then melodies would come out and and lyrics would come out and things like that so it's really cool for me to be like so young in the studio watching the the process like really unfold and i mean i wanted to write i wanted to say things but they just kind of like oh you know <laughs> mm -hmm. like you're so mm -hmm. young like oh you know oh mm -hmm. ricky mm -hmm. you know but uh ronnie really loved um to watch me dance like when i dance like michael jackson he freaking loved it so much and mm -hmm. he uh he loved my voice too because i was able to um kind of have a michael 
esque vibe about me, like when I sang, mm -hmm. especially mm -hmm. back then. I mean, I can still do it now, but back then my voice was, it was it sounded a lot like that. Um, so he really appreciated that. His his big dream was to work with Michael Jackson, and later on, he actually his dream came true. He got to work with mm -hmm. Michael after Michael heard our record. He was inspired to work with Ronnie Jerkins. I I know that's a fact. Wow. He told us. Yeah, Ronnie told us. I bet that was for his album Invincible. Invisible. I'm not yes. really sure. Invincible. Yeah. I, I, because it has that vibe. It that Rodney Jerkins vibe. So. Huh. Right. He hired oh. him to do his whole album after well. our our record. Yeah. Which is crazy because Rodney Jerkins is known mostly for producing more like hip hop R and B stuff, and you guys were pop. So I guess that was like a challenge for him too, because uh, you guys were more into the pop area. It's a good, yeah, that's a good observation. Um, he was very R and B, yeah, very R and B, and um, it was crazy because I had to really um, push myself and uh, mold not mold myself, but really had to study a lot of R and B in order to work with these people and to get lead parts. Mm -hmm. I was always competing with the other lead singer, Josh. We we're always like really competing mm -hmm. for parts mm -hmm. and, um, they didn't want the other boys to sing the leads. Um, it was just Josh and I, but at the time it was like, I, Josh was more of an R and B singer and I'm definitely more of a pop singer. Mm -hmm. So, um, mm -hmm. a lot of times they would try to, you know, uh, gosh, I remember being like a little bit bullied in the studio, you know, for my voice, for the way that it sounded. And um, it was like kind of like a wake up call for me to to um, open my my mind and expand my mind to try new things. Bullied mm -hmm. in the sense like, oh, he said, you know, one of the guys was saying mean things about about the way I sounded and making fun of me or, you know, bringing me down and. And then one time he sat me down in a car. His, mm -hmm. I think his name is Sean. Sean. I did not like him. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't really like my voice. He didn't like my voice too much. I mean, I, I think he liked it, but Ronnie loved my voice. So it's mm -hmm. like, I was, mm -hmm. that was my big F you to Sean. Mm -hmm. You know, well, Ronnie likes my voice. And Ronnie's <laughs> putting me on doing like 90% of the backgrounds. Ronnie, you know what I mean? So we, we kind of like clashed a little bit and then one time he put me in the car and we he's like ricky have you ever just like because he wanted me to just like sing notes like like i'm talking as opposed to just singing because i came from a theater background i came from you know listening to madonna and madonna at the time was a very you know singy held out the notes things like that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he's like have you ever just like sat down and like listen to music just just sit down and and listen like don't do like don't do anything and hear everything and, and we, we, he sat me down and, and we listened to a couple R&B records. And I felt like, I think for the first time, I actually like for like listen to music. It was really mm -hmm. weird. He taught me how to listen to music. So a mm -hmm. lot of times, like the, the meanest people in your life, like they actually help you the most. It's mm -hmm. the craziest thing. That's been, the, I agree. been that's been my experience. Uh, the, the people who I thought were my enemy, they actually are my friend. It's weird. Mm -hmm. And yes. the people who thought my friend are actually my enemy. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Totally. Yes. I, I know what you mean. So, okay. <laughs> it's crazy. Yes. So, well, then the first record happened and you guys were touring. Yeah. Um, that was in 1997, your first record. I mean, wow. Yeah, <laughs> it's been 90, quite some 98, time. 98 was the album, 98. right? Okay. Yeah. And you guys got, got to tour with... Um, 98 degrees so britney no at that point uh we we toured with aaron carter in europe oh, aaron the carter. label put mm -hmm. us in in europe oh okay okay and how was like, that we toured experience europe for twice you? wow oh, it was amazing it was amazing i loved uh germany uh we got to go gosh everywhere germany france uh sweden it's a beautiful place yeah. um i just remember germany was like really popular for us like we were very popular in those places and they would like try to the fans would bum rush the the tour bus and they would start shaking it back and forth um mm -hmm. it, it was wild and it was a lot of fun wow and you guys were yeah. so young and touring on in europe so that's that's great 
Yeah, yeah. We were very young, uh, very competitive with each other. Just, just you know, regular boy type stuff, you know, competing for girls, competing for attention. Um, it's just a very competitive, like, it, like who could get the most uh, fan gifts or who can get the most screams on stage. It was always Danny, that mm -hmm. motherfucker. <laughs> 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 always Danny, the heartthrob. Um, and then I came, I think I came a, a, a second. I think I was second most of the time. And then it was Josh and then it was Eric. And then sometimes it would be the other way around. It'd be some other, somebody else, but mm -hmm. it was just, it was kind of uncomfortable. I mean, we talk about now, nowadays, like, you know, objectification. We we're more aware of things of, of people's feelings, right? Mm -hmm. This woke generation is kind of like into, you know, feelings and it's very difficult to get on stage and like, you know, not be appreciated because you're you got other members that are like like Danny for instance like scream mm -hmm. so loud it made you feel like shit am I am I good am I this and Danny yes. the whole time felt super insecure because he felt he couldn't sing he felt he couldn't dance and he just but he was just idolized for the way he looked and mm -hmm. it was almost like well would I rather be I like would I rather be appreciated for the way that I look or my talent my talent, yeah. yes. And ult mm -hmm. ultimately, it, um, I was appreciated more for my talent, which is good. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, it was just a very complex complex experience to put, bet, for, for but, me um, as a kid. Mm -hmm. Because I've been talking to other uh, girl groups. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure you're familiar with I-5. I saw that interview. And yes, uh, my mm -hmm. ex-girlfriend was in that band, Gabby. Who? Gabby. Oh, and she's Mexican, just like me. So Latina. Yes. Yeah, she, she was my girlfriend. Oh. We we met on tour on the Britney tour. Oh well, that's amazing. I mean, she. Uh, I talked to them and asked them how yeah. was how was the relationship between girls. Like you guys are together like all the time. I mean, I know yeah. that for girls it's difficult, but I don't know how it is for boys. I mean, I know you can get in trouble sometimes, disagreements and stuff, but. Uh, now that you tell me that you guys felt like competitive, I mean, I, I it, know it's. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. It was, it's a very, it's hard to be in a group with people. It's very difficult uh, or in a band. That's why I don't, I, I don't mesh well with others. I don't play well. I, I guess when it comes to things like that, I have to be very independent because um, mm -hmm. I feel like I'm one of those fish, you know, the really pretty fish that like the, the blue, What's that blue one? <laughs> really bright blue or bright red, and it eats yes. the other fish, right? You put them <laughs> in a thing, it starts to eat the other fish. Inevitably, when it comes to the competitive, when it comes to music and things like that, I inevitably will take control. Oh, it's okay. that. It's very mm -hmm. simple. I will take control of of the situation because I know I know what I'm doing. I've been singing forever. I've been mm -hmm. dancing forever. I've been in this industry forever. And if somebody's going to try to like pull me or control it just it does not work because i already know pretty much where the band needs to go which mm -hmm. i eventually took more control when when josh left i took mm -hmm. more control of the group and that's why you saw the group become a little bit more pop oriented it became mm -hmm. a little bit more the dance we, we started dancing more we started to get more free in that way uh, mm -hmm. before the label was telling us oh we don't want we don't want you to dance we don't want these boys to dance and i was like why you guys are crazy and then NSYNC and Backstreet Boys came out and they were like dancing and it's like, oh well now it's now it's okay but I was yeah, telling them yeah. we need to move we need to move we need to like perform and they were just mm -hmm. terrified of people thinking that we were gay well uh, nowadays figure it's one. different yeah figure that uh, one out yeah <laughs> swallow that pill <laughs> I know. Uh, and well, then you got to release your second album a few years later, um, but under Madonna's uh, Maverick. Yeah, that's correct. How was that? How was that change? I mean, how did you guys move from Michael Jackson's label to Madonna's? It was uh, one of those things we, we were getting frustrated because our album was being shelved at Sony. Um, oh. We were, yeah. We went from MJ and then Epic Records. They they picked up they picked us up, and they wanted to to make an album. We made an album under Epic, 
and then mm-hmm. Epic kind of shelved that album for like Mandy Moore and other artists. So um, that's when Maverick Records swooped in and kind of saved our lives and bought the album from Epic. Oh, I think it was like okay. a million dollar deal to like for us to shift from this label to Maverick because wow. Maverick was like, look, we're going to put you on tour with Britney. We have big plans for this group. We love this group. Madonna loves this group. And I remember, first of all, Madonna's my hero, musical yep. hero. Mm-hmm. So all of this was in- incredibly just crazy for me to hear that Madonna wants to sign you to her, her label. Just be hush hush about it. You don't want anybody to find out. This PR guy told me. I was like, you've got to be kidding me. And then we we walked into the offices of Maverick Records and all of the uh, like the you know the president, the vice president, the blah 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 blah. blah. They were all there to hear us so we could sing uh-huh. live and. It was like one of the most nerve wracking days of my life. We had to sing, uh, we sang acapella for them. And um, Mm -hmm. I was freaking nervous because like, if we fuck up, then we really basically don't have a label. We have nothing because Epic is shelving our, our, our record. So Mm -hmm. we sang our little hearts out and um, they ended up signing us to the label and they were so fucking amazing. Maverick was the best. I bet. Yeah. I I know that not everybody got to join Maverick Records. I mean, it was kind of difficult to be part of that. I don't know if you're familiar with Amanda. Last name? Um, she didn't perform oh, that, on that's her, a, her. Oh, Amanda was that. That was like her full her full name. Yes, uh, her song was "Everybody Doesn't." I think I I think I remember that. Well, she was signed to uh, Maverick Records too in in 2001. So I don't know if you guys ever met i got to interview her too and uh, she she mentioned that uh, she was part of maverick and she ended up being like the happiest because she was treated like a queen and everyone was so nice michelle branch as well was on michelle maverick. branch yes that's correct like right after we we left um maverick uh michelle branch was there I remember doing a show with Michelle Branch at a charity event. And she's like, oh, my God, we're on the same label, blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, but they kind of dropped us. So <laughs> 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 they didn't drop us, but our, it's it's a complicated situation. Our, our management was, you know, they, because you guys, they, you guys they, were they, doing great. Up, they effed up the uh, deal. Oh, uh, Because mm-hmm. you guys were doing great. I mean, you guys were selling records. You guys had a big fan base, so uh, that was yeah. what, about, what I was about to ask you. What happened? Why did you guys disband? Well, um, it was the happiest day of my mom's life when when the band ended. She just saw so oh. much like turmoil and so much like conflict between us and the management and the management and the label. One day, one day, the manager came to us and said, "I screamed at the A and R representative." he won't he won't let me like use the producers that i want to use for the record so basically Mm -hmm. uh, maverick wanted us to use their producers for the album but but our our manager wouldn't make enough money that way so he wanted his producers to be a part of that which is incredibly stupid he should have just let Mm -hmm. maverick make the kind of record that they want to make um yeah Mm -hmm. but he didn't and he ended up yelling at the uh the AR representative his name is Danny Strict I remember his last name was Strict okay. and that's when you know the deal was done that mean like it was over he yelled at him one time and the deal was over and oh. um it was very I was very upset incredibly upset I bet yeah. I mean you guys yeah. were together like for five years um the the boy band or the the pop yeah band? Yeah, no, I no, knew these. Sorry. I knew these boys. No, I knew these boys when I was like fourteen years old, like way longer. Oh, you guys met when you were younger. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. I thought you guys auditioned like separately and then met, but uh, no, I didn't like, we, know that part. <laughs> we were friends before. Um, oh. We would do like dance competitions together, and after mm-hmm. the dance competitions, we'd all get McDonald's and hang out, and we we were friends. Oh, we okay. Friends. Especially Danny, and- Ricky, and Eric. We, we were friends before. The other guys oh, well. kind of just came in and out, you know. Mm-hmm. So are you still in touch with them? 
I I'm more in touch with um, Tommy McCarthy. Mm -hmm. he, he, he's he very adamant up. about about mm -hmm. starting the band up again and the group and and I I'm not opposed to it. I just think that um, again I'd have to have a lot of control and mm -hmm. as far as like production and sound and everything and and some people would have to get on treadmills. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Because they're not ready. Um, but would you be up to it for it? Well, I, I mean, would. Say, you like yeah, to? I I always said yes, but the thing is, is like I would have to crack that whip. I'm sorry, I'd have to crack that whip. Mm -hmm. He knows it. Tommy knows it. Please, please. Mm -hmm. And Eric, yes, he's a professional, but like you know, he and I. Just to be blunt, we're not really talking right now for whatever reason. I don't I have no idea why, no clue. Maybe because I'm mm -hmm. too blunt in these interviews. But everything I'm saying now, I would say to their face. Everything mm -hmm. I'm saying now, and they they effing know it, you know. And everything I did in my career, as far as like my solo career being Ricky Rebel, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. I, you know, I said what I said. You know what I mean? It's like. It just, it is what it is. And if you have a problem with me, like I prefer that people come to me, like right, like come to my face, talk to me and mm -hmm. be a man about it. And I actually told him when, when his brother died, Eric's brother died and I reached out to him. I said, I'm so incredibly sorry. Like his, his brother uh, committed suicide. I, I was deeply like beyond hurt that he, when I reached out to him, I said, I'm so sorry for your loss. Please call me if you need anything from me. I got no response from this, from Eric, like nothing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What, what can you do about that? Like what, as a person, like, and if we were going to do a reunion project, like I would need like all the, the members, especially Danny. I would need Danny. I would want Danny, you know? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I don't think that it would be enough just to be Ricky and Tommy. Right. Like, I think it, that's right. fine. Maybe in a combination with a super group, maybe if we worked with Nick Lachey or like some people from 98 Degrees. And, and I know mm -hmm. Tommy's trying to make something like that happen, which I'm definitely op I'm, I'm definitely open to. I, I, I'd be dumb not to. Um, uh, but it's just like it's just it goes back to like this professionality thing that I think that that unfortunately some of the members lack. And, and I've mm -hmm. always had that professional attitude. I don't, I never really cared about people's feelings about me. I really cared about the work and getting the shit done, mm -hmm, you know? Mm -hmm, and I mm -hmm, feel like that's part of this thing is like, it's, it's again, putting your feelings aside, get, let's do the work and get that done. Let's make some money and have some fun. Let's mm -hmm. entertain the children, the, the people and, mm -hmm. and, and grow as artists and then expand upon that. that that's always been my goal. But um, a lot of people are not me. Uh, a lot of people are, I've noticed in this industry, they're, they're, uh, they're sensitive in a different way. Like I'm sensitive when it comes to like, you know, my, my work and my writing, like when I get behind the mic and all of that stuff, I'm, I'm a sensitive person. But mm -hmm. when it comes mm -hmm. to business and things like that, I'm not. I'm super like, hey guys, let's, let's get this done. Mm -hmm. Let's do this. Mm -hmm. And if somebody has a problem, like let's try to like work it out right now right here right now right now yes i, I know I, I totally understand what you mean because uh if there's going to be a reunion i think that you would like to be in the best of terms and not like i'm not speaking to him and whatever there's a conflict i mean i think that you guys would like to be in the same you know like level and not want to get yeah. And stuff. <laughs> yeah yeah i love them to death but honestly for me to work with any, with them, I would have to like, you know, they're gonna have to go to the gym. They're going to have to work out. They're going to have to do all the stuff that I do on a daily basis. Like I'm not trying mm -hmm. to be mean. I'm not being mm -hmm. mean or anything. They got to eat right. They got to, they got to really train because they're older and they have to work 10 times harder now than they mm -hmm. did when they were mm -hmm. 16. The voice, they got to be working that voice. Like my voice is tired today. So I do my scales every day. Are they doing their fucking scales every fucking day? Like I am? No. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> are they producing yes because you're, you're still i don't know if they're still singing if they have a solo careers because as far as i know it's only you the one who had a solo career right i i think that they have had success in their own way and i and i 
and I love, I'm not, I love that. I want mm -hmm. them to succeed. And I know, I know Eric was on Broadway. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. He was in Wicked. He's also done several other Broadway shows. I'm fucking happy for him. Uh, Tommy, I know that he does his own records as well. He's, he's singing a lot, producing. I know that Danny has become a dad. Daddy's, Danny's more of a dad vibe. He's got children now mm -hmm. and he's happy. He's so freaking happy. Um, he has houses and, you know, he's got money. I, I am so proud of Danny. I love Danny so much. And it was mm -hmm. funny because Danny and I, um, we, we were like this on tour. I like mm -hmm. we first like went out. Um, but as the years went on, like he, he and I became like kind of stronger together. We realized that if we came together and fought for certain things from the label or from our management to get paid, like if we fought together, we were stronger. Mm -hmm. So he and I became uh, close. Um, and it was funny when uh, Eric's father died, we went to the funeral. We had a, a reunion there. Mm -hmm. I mean, I actually took a picture. It's actually kind of, you know, blown up a little bit. I put it on my, on my Instagram account and people were like, Oh my God. It was like a then and now picture. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and, uh, it was, it was great to be, be with all of them, but really Danny was the one that I, we just like hugged each other like for so mm -hmm. long and, mm -hmm. and wouldn't let go for some reason. We just had this very strong understanding and um, that we didn't have when we were kids of each other. Now, mm -hmm. now we understand each other. But I honestly I have no hard feelings about any of them. I fucking love them forever. They know that. And if they don't, I don't well, care. <laughs> but at, least, at least you can say you have great memories about uh, the time you grew up and stuff. <laughs> I don't care. Like, I love people. I'm like, I'm done. You know, I'm, I'm done with the it's, it's over. It's like, if, if you have genuine feelings about somebody and you love them and you've told them and you've reached out and you've done this stuff and, and they know you're a bitch, I'm a bitch. Like, I, you know what I'm saying? Like, I gotta be real. Like I gotta be me. Mm -hmm. I am a control freak. Get over. Like, that's who I, that's what it is. But it's because I was a control freak is why I feel a lot of our success happened because mm -hmm. I was never really happy. I wasn't happy with the way we sounded. I wasn't happy with the way we danced. I wasn't happy with the way we looked. I wasn't happy with, you know, the the success we had. I always wanted more, more, more. And I and I think mm -hmm. that because I wanted us to rehearse so much and um and be take this seriously, it's like I got labeled like, you know, a bad person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or you know what I mean? Like, oh, Ricky's just, you know, but, but we needed that. Yeah, needed I think it's like great. That. More like a perfectionist. Yeah, because I felt like Josh was all about himself. He really just cared about himself. Mm -hmm. And I felt like I care about myself, but I know that at the end of the day, if we don't get to the level that I need the group, needed the group to go, I would not be able to branch off and do the kind of projects that I really wanted to do. So mm -hmm. in essence, I cared a lot about the group because I, the success of the group was very important to me. Mm -hmm. And Danny and Eric at the time were really following Josh. Like they had, they, you know, they followed, they were followers. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Sorry guys, you're followers <laughs> and I'm not. Mm -hmm. So it was just very mm -hmm. difficult. So when he, when Josh left, it was like, thank God he was, mm -hmm. he was a nightmare. Do you want to get a story? Do you want some drama? I got the tea. You can spill the tea. Spill the tea. I mean, I don't mind. It's, you can openly drinking, talk about whatever you want. I'm drinking my <laughs> green tea. I'm drinking my green tea, which keeps me young, too. If you guys like green tea, I love green tea. <laughs> I know. No, okay. We were we were scheduled to uh, perform in Canada. It was going to be, like, the biggest show of our lives um, mm -hmm. on YTV. YTV is, like, their version of Nickelodeon. And they were going to do, like, this huge... Um, like festival and have no authority perform like three numbers and there okay. were gonna be thousands of people there. It was like our first big show. And we got to the, we got to the airport and Josh was threatening to jump off of a bridge because his girlfriend broke up with him. Okay. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I'm not. He was like hysterically like 
out of his mind. He was going to jump off a building. I, I, there, there was one time he didn't come on the plane because he was going to jump off, uh, uh, threatening to jump off a bridge. And then there was another time, I think the second time he went berserk. Oh, he quit the band. That was it. He quit the band the day before we were about to leave to go to Canada. Oh, God. <laughs> and what, what pissed me off was like Danny knew that he was going to quit the band and pursue a solo career. So and one of the biggest so shows did. of our life. <laughs> what? So he did one day before you guys left Canada? Yes. For the biggest show wow. of our lives. Oh, that's crazy. So we, we had to re I had to reschedule like structure the songs, give give Eric Eric actually has a has a really high voice. So he was able to take Josh's parts. And it was like Josh and Ricky, we had to do the whole the whole show without him. And like on the airplane trying to figure out who's going to sing what parts. It was the most unprofessional God. whack ass shit I've ever in my life. I would well, tell Josh, I right. I would tell Josh right now, like that was such a fucked up thing. Yeah. I mean, how can you do that to your, um, your bandmates? I mean, how can you do something like that? Cause he only you know cared about himself. To... Cause he only cared about Whoa. himself. So as selfish That's as people great. think I am, I'm not selfish. I just, I have like, I'm not like that. I would never do that. I would never no, do that because it would hurt me. It would hurt my projection. It was, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It was just completely, it was completely um, a selfish thing to do. I know. So. Wow. I did. I, I never expected that, that story. <laughs> you didn't know that? No, yeah. I didn't. <laughs> so when Tommy, when Josh left, I was like so grateful. And that show, by the way, was kick ass. You can, you, you can view it on YouTube. Type in okay. uh, no authority YTV. It's YTV, online. Okay. It's, it's amazing. I have black jet black hair and I'm just excited as hell. Like I've never experienced the, the crowd like that ever in my life. Uh -huh. It was so, it was such a rush. And what did you guys do when you guys were on stage and I, I know you guys sometimes talk to the audience. Were you telling them that Josh was sick or that he leave or what did you guys do? Because I bet yeah, people we, were asking. We, we said Josh couldn't make it out here today, but we're here to blah, 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 blah. And that was it. Oh, he got one mention. That was it. That's crazy. Well, anyways, you guys did still did the, the show and it went great. Yeah. So, yeah. That's, that's yeah it was, it was awesome. <laughs> It was wonderful. And then came and then came Tommy, and you guys were in a better place right now. Like, yeah, you felt better with him. Yeah, yeah, I love Tommy. Um, he was just a breath of fresh air. He was really excited to be on in the group. Um, he had a good voice. Mm -hmm. um, he's also very ambitious. Tommy's mm -hmm. ambitious, mm -hmm. so I really like that he he still is very ambitious with the group i mean he really wants it to go and uh, he'll call me every now and then um every now and then drunk by the way <laughs> which i don't appreciate mm -hmm. but um yeah it's like why don't you want to do this i'm like i i said i do Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. get the boys together get get eric well eric doesn't want to do it he, he he doesn't like you i don't know why i'm <laughs> like well okay i don't know well, i don't know bro he's like you guys have beef i have no beef i have zero beef with eric stretch like nothing i freaking mm -hmm, love him mm -hmm. i freaking well, love I guess eric you guys, forever i think you guys would like to what would be good for you is to sit all together and talk about your issues and then oh god let it all Marielle, out Marielle, <laughs> it would just be a nightmare <laughs> you um, think so <laughs> i think that you know i think that we would just like laugh with each other oh my god you guys i have the best videos of us um in 2017 i was up for a nomination for an american influencer award Okay. okay. And mm -hmm. I, I performed Ricky Rebel. I did two of my songs, Boys and Sometimes Girls, and If You Were My Baby mm -hmm. in front of a live mm -hmm. television audience. It was freaking amazing. And that's on, uh, I want you guys to Google that if you can. Ricky Rebel American Influencer Awards. That was the best performance. I think I've, one of the best performances I've done as okay. Ricky Rebel. Mm -hmm. I was so polished. The hair, the, the clothes, the make, the, everything perfect. 
-hmm. Anyway, um, the day before that show, I hung out with the boys. We had like a reunion and we just started watching like old clips of us. And we were laughing and like, it was just, we, it was just like perfect. It was fine. When you get us into a room, we're like totally, I, I don't know why I said it'd be a nightmare. It's like the exact opposite. We just like love each other and we just like, like shit on each other, you know, like make fun of each other in different ways and, um, and laugh and talk about old times. So, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, yeah. that's what would happen if we inevitably, if we got together again. Well, fingers crossed. I mean, I, think. I, I know that I, I, speaking for myself and other fans, I think that, uh, we would love to see a reunion from you guys. It would be great. You know, like a 2000s pop reunion with other groups like I-5 or uh, back from back in the day, you know? Well, I've got the, I've got the producers. I've got the stylists. I've got the photographers. I've got the directors. I've got the um, everything you possibly could imagine to create pop stars. Like well, I know all of them. <laughs> They're all in my phone and they're mine. They're my contacts that I've developed over the years. I'd be more than willing to, to share my contacts, to make bomb music. I'm making incredible music right now in Hollywood at a, at a great studio called the Dub Room Studios. That's where I recorded my new record, which is coming mm-hmm. out this summer, by the way. Uh, oh, great. Should I give you the title? My album is called Wild Reality and uh, it's, it's amazing. And, um, so I'm making really great music. I produce my own music here. Um, so yeah, like I'm ready, ready when they are. I hope they are. And I was about to go to your solo career. Now that we just done talking about no authority, you change your name to Ricky rebel. Why? Yeah. Well, at the time, I, uh, well, first of all, I opened a dictionary in the R's. I said, I want, I want to be Ricky with an R something after okay. it. And so I opened the dictionary and right there, if there was the word rebel okay. and then I read what, what a rebel is. And I, and I'm like, I'm definitely, definitely that I don't like authority. I was actually the person who came, came up with the idea of, of, of authority. Like I wanted authority in the word and they came up with no authority. I'm like, okay, whatever. Okay. But anyway, authority has always been like a, a an issue with me. Um, mm-hmm. And kind of, I, I like to rebel against a lot of things, a lot of ideas. And at the time, I was making a rock album and working with this producer who was very hard on me and like, oh, you can't be uh, gay looking or acting. You got to change who you are. You can't, you can't be feminine. You can't be that. You got to be tough. You got to be this to do rock music. And, and I was like, Dude, so I while I was making the rock album, I was producing like stuff in my house, kind of mm-hmm. rebelling against all of that and kind of leaning into the femininity, leaning into the sexuality. And mm-hmm. I started producing music like like dance music, dance electronic pop music, uh, with mm-hmm. my friend Wayne Folks. That was in 2010. And uh it was basically I was rebelling against this idea that I, I couldn't be myself and succeed mm-hmm. at the same time. Mm-hmm. Like there's this thing where they, the industry tries to tell you that you have to change yourself. Um, you can't really be who you are. Uh, and there's some truth to that, but there's also the, the mega, mega truth is that you have to be yourself in order to succeed. There is no mm-hmm. other option. I mean, I guess, I guess if you're a good actor, yeah, but I'm, I'm not that like, I'm not acting like I, I have to be me. And the more I mm-hmm. am myself, the more success I have. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Obviously, like one of my my tracks called "Boys and Sometimes Girls" is about my sexuality, and uh-huh. that was my one of my biggest hits. It was a Billboard Top 40 um, dance club. It was on the dance club charts, and mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. it was just a it's like a bisexual anthem, and it was very honest, mm-hmm. and it was at the time like pretty rebellious. So that's, uh, well, now I get why you put your, uh, the Ricky Rebel name. Now we finally get it because I was, I was wondering because your last name, if I'm not mistaken, it's like, it's a Latino. It's, uh, it's uh, Godinez. Godinez. See. Si. <laughs> Do you know that that, that word here in Mexico means, uh, when you are a, we call them, you are a Godin 
because uh, it's like you are from the working part, like those who work in offices and only have like an office life. And so we call oh. them the godines. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yes. Well, I'm also so I'm also a <laughs> descendant of um, Felix. My middle name is Felix, which is uh, I'm I my uh, great aunt is Maria Felix. Do you know who that oh is? Oh my God! Yes, she's like a, the biggest diva here in Mexico. Correct. That's my oh. that's my lineage. She's in my blood. Whoa! Well, you have that feeling, you know. You have that vibe, you know, like that diva that vibe. So I do. I definitely I do. I can sense. I can sense why. <laughs> that's I have great. a deeper vibe. Yeah. Um, oh, that's great. She's she's huge. Here. Well, she was, unfortunately. She passed yeah. away, but uh, she was she's huge gorgeous. here in Mexico. She was beautiful. Yes. Yeah. So, oh, wow. I didn't that's know that. Fun fact. Name. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I didn't realize she was so huge, but we, we tell people in Mexico and they're like, oh, my God. She's like Marilyn Monroe out there. She's very yes, very yes. popular. She's like one of the biggest actresses here. So, mm -hmm. well, you come from a very nice and interesting uh, line of. Uh, I, I guess you have that in your blood, you know, like that acting and being a diva. So yeah, I have great. a lot of. I mean, I do have a lot of pride in my in my in my hard work that I've put into. Mm -hmm. uh, into my craft. So I know I'm not the best, but I know that I am really great at what I do. You know, I'm great at what I do. I know there are people who are better at different things and it's great, but it's also good to really acknowledge yourself and give yourself like props, you know, like, mm -hmm. oh man, I'm, um, and you have to be that way in this industry. You can't really let the numbers, like even numbers or all that stuff. And you can't let things like that make you think that you're not talented. It's just a lot of it is luck. A lot mm -hmm. of it is, um, you know, mean the right person, which is a part of being luck. Mm -hmm. um, there, there's a lot, there are a lot of factors and it's also a very political industry. Um, mm -hmm. So anyway, yeah. Back to That's Ricky great. Rebel era, Ricky Rebel era. Yes. You have released several records. Um, how would you describe your music for those who don't know it? And how would you invite them to listen to your music? How would you describe it? Well, I I make pop music primarily. I can't mm -hmm. I can't not make pop. So I mean the foundation is pop, mm -hmm. and then it branches out into rock elements and also uh, EDM elements, electronic dance music as well. A lot mm -hmm. of um, DJs um, like to remix my music, so it has kind of like that vibe too. Okay. And if you could choose your five songs, uh, five songs from your uh, solo career, which ones would you choose? Like your five favorites from you? Oh, I know. I know that right off the top of my head. Um, Boys and Sometimes Girls is, is amazing. Mm -hmm. If You Were My Baby is a great song. If You Were My Baby. Time is a beautiful ballad. That's on my album called The New Alpha, but it's also on the Royal Collection. All of these are on the Royal Collection. Mm -hmm. which is a CD that I have available on my website. Let me show it to you. Okay. Here it is. This Whoa. is available on my website, rickyrebelrocks.com. And it has like all of the, like my favorite, like fan favorite stuff. And it's got a really cool booklet. Okay. And if you buy it now, I will sign a copy for you. It's rickyrebelrocks.com. So anyway, okay. Oh, on this record, great. I put I put together like the most, the best of collection. Okay, okay. okay. So on here, I think the, the most standout tracks are Boys. We've got If You Were My Baby, Time. I think Savior is a really good song. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think, I think Get It On is great too. Get It On. Get It On is like, my, that was my first song. Yeah. Okay, so those and are your I'll, top five. <laughs> I think so. I think the like just taking a quick glance right here, my my personal top five. Mm -hmm, I have mm -hmm. a, a new album coming out soon, uh, Wild Reality, and we're gonna definitely add some favorites. There's gonna be some goodies on that record that people are okay. gonna really <laughs> love. Have you I think, think uh, or have you considered uh, re-recording some of No Authority songs? 
No, I haven't, but I have considered, um, what do you call it? Um, I, I've actually performed it before. I did Can I Get Your Number Live. Oh, um, I love that. When I was on tour, I was on tour with mm -hmm. O-Town as Ricky Rebel. Oh, and I love I, them. <laughs> I know they're so good. They're so sweet, mm -hmm. too. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. So I did, like, uh, Can I Get Your Number every night, and it was fun. And then I asked the boys to do it with me, and they didn't want to do it. They're like, Eric was like, what's your budget? I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Get up on stage and, and do this. Like, what is your problem? Anyway, me bitching. Sorry. <laughs> that would be great to see them performing a, a song from another group. So it was would, a perfect opportunity. We were in San Diego <laughs> opening for O-Town. Thousands of people in the audience. I had a band. I had everything. I had dancers. I'm like, let's do this. Mm -hmm. And then he was like, what's your budget? Like, how much am I going to pay him to do that? <laughs> really? Oh, God. <laughs> really? Can't believe and I that. Just, and I just said, really? You can talk to him about it. I've been trying to reach them. Hopefully I can get an answer Tommy, soon. Tommy will <laughs> definitely Tommy will definitely talk to you. He'll definitely talk oh. to you. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. He's great. great. So uh well anyway, that would have been great to see you performing with I know. Hotel. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was a great tour. I, I, uh, they, they love my show. They're like, we should call this the Ricky rebel tour because <laughs> 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 of the audience like really responded well to my show. And that's great. Yeah. Uh, uh huh. So I was watching your videos. Well, some, because you have a lot yesterday and I can tell, I could sense that you have like a Prince vibe. Are you yeah. kind of influenced by him? Because I, I sense a bit of Prince in your videos. Massive, massive Prince. Like I wasn't mistaken. <laughs> worshipper. Um, yeah, I worship Prince's music. Um, yeah, I think I sound like him. Um, yeah, it's easy for me to, to replicate that kind of sound. Especially yeah, when he goes high. I, I, I mean, all of that. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he has like he's like in my range. Same with David Bowie. Um, they're kind of mm -hmm. more in my range. Um, there are very few singers out there that, that I think I can kind of relate to, mm -hmm. um, especially male singers. Uh, a lot of times they're, they're too high vocalists. Like they're really, they're really high. Like, mm -hmm. like for instance, um, God, why am I queen? Right. Freddie Mercury, mm -hmm. as much as I love, mm -hmm. love him, like I can't relate to him as, as a, as an artist. because it's like, his voice is just way out of my range. It's kind of like Adam Lambert, you know, that's mm -hmm. more Adam mm -hmm. Lambert's vibe. Whereas David Bowie is more of my vibe, like my tenor, like I sound good because he's a baritone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I relate, I relate to, to Prince because he's a baritone as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. 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 I can sing his songs pretty easily. I could sense some of that. And I love how you dress up in your videos. Tell me ab about that. I mean, do you create your own costumes? Like, uh, do you come out with the ideas of the makeup, the, the dresses? How, how, how does that work? Well, it's like a combination. It's like a team effort. I have, uh, like I said before, I have a really good stylist. Um, she's a style coach. Shout out to Elena Nazarov, who is in Berlin right now, living in Berlin. Um, she styles me and uh, together we work on, on looks. I tell her, you know, what vibe I'm feeling, where, where, what I want, where I'm, you know, what I want to do. And then she, um, you know, makes it happen with, mm. you know, together it's a collective thing. We go shopping together and we'll try on clothes and we'll know right away. We're both like, no, mm. or we're like, yes, like, I, she's kind of trained me to kind of, you know, see fashion in a whole, in a whole new way. So mm -hmm. I really adore her. Um, and then the makeup, makeup, I have a really great uh, makeup artist. Her name is Reba Vera. Shout out to Reba Vera in LA. Uh, I, I kind of don't like to work with other people. I, I just did a fashion shoot with a high fashion photographer and in Vegas. And it turned out to be, I mean, the shoot came out amazing, but they weren't happy with me because I ended up calling uh, Elena because the makeup looked like it looked like 
horrible. The, you know, Reinhardt wanted a certain makeup style. It was like copper, and it was great. Um, the, it, it was great to have it, but it, the way that she did it, it made me look like a, like a transsexual. And I'm not a transsexual. I am a rock star. So yes. she got on she got on the, the phone and she was like, hey, take all that off. Like, take off the eyeshadow, take off the thing, make it darker, uh, make it more masculine, cut off his cut up his his jaw. I mean, mm -hmm. everything. It was really good tips. And I and mm -hmm. I lost that PR company because of it. They got upset that I called her and did all that. But I don't regret it because the shoot came out great. I'm a mm -hmm. results oriented person. Mm -hmm. And I really didn't understand, you know, kind of like the feedback, like, hey, you know, that was rude. I'm like, no, a lot of celebrities bring in their own makeup people, their own stylists, and they work together in tandem with with the photographer stylist and the photographer's makeup. And they work together as a team to make it happen. To me, it's about a team effort. And uh, people got offended. Feelings got hurt. And I said, OK, and it's, we're not working together anymore. But I got the photos. So. <laughs> that's what counts that's what counts darling so <laughs> darling i'm moving on you know what i mean and that's just that's been my life i i, I piss people off sometimes marielle i can't help it i mm -hmm. piss off my partner but he's been with me for nine years i piss <laughs> off the boy the boy band member but i know that they they freaking love me i know my i know i piss off the world you know when i did certain things in in um at the grammys if you google ricky rebel at the grammys i piss people off oh yeah i know that yeah you know, you know what it, that. you read it. We probably can't talk about it, but at the end of the day, I did what I did. I said what I said, and I don't regret anything because I did it from my heart. <laughs> Everything I did, I did from my heart. And therefore like I win. <laughs> That's what I always say. If you're conscious of what you're doing and you feel right doing it, why feeling regrets later? So that's great. I mean, and that's why people love me a lot or they or they have a little bit of a problem with me. But but I told I told that that PR company, I said, hey, you know, I, I thank God that she called on that. We, we did that call and that she helped fix the makeup and stuff, because otherwise I would have looked really not me. OK, mm -hmm. it would have been bad. It would have been horrible. And um, they said, well, they're, well they're, they're upset. And I said, well, I don't care about their feelings. I don't. And I said, I don't even care about my, I, I don't even care about my feelings, Marielle. Mm -hmm, At mm -hmm. the end of the day, I've got a pro, I've got something to do. I've got some, I've got, you know, I need results. I want results mm -hmm. and I'm results like driven. And for mm -hmm, this new mm -hmm. record, for this new record, it's all about like, I mean, I really want to talk about wild reality. Um, we wrote it during COVID. My, my best friend and I, Wayne, Wayne folks talk about results. We wrote mm -hmm. the whole album like via zoom and mm -hmm. it's spectacular. The first single is coming out probably in about three or two weeks. I I'm still kind of holding it back. I'm, I know it's coming out soon okay. in the video. It's <laughs> oh, called the first great. single. The first single is called Los Angeles. Okay. I will be there to watch it. I can wait. I mean, what can you say more about this new project? What can we expect that's different from the, the other records you have released? It's, uh, I think it's a little bit more like, uh, a little bit like the first records I made, like Manipulator, like my very first album. It's a little bit the, in the spirit of that. It's a little more fun. It's, a, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of like when I was like 20 years, or, you know, like, going back in time like like i went to a time warp that youthful spirit mm -hmm. um that i had back then and not taking myself so seriously and having fun like the whole the whole objective of the record uh, was for us to have fun and to make sure that mm -hmm. the, the listener was having fun listening to it and taking mm -hmm. them on a journey and um i think that we 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 did that because we were locked down in a pandemic and mm -hmm. we had nowhere to go. And we were upset that the world and, and the media were trying to make us feel bad and trying to make us fight with each other. Like the political mm -hmm. thing, like everybody trying to fight, everybody trying to feel bad that they, you know, they don't have a job. I mean, they were trying to make every, all the, the, the numbers, the numbers, the numbers, the numbers, every trying to make you feel like scared. So we wanted to do, something that completely rebelled against all of that and do something super fun. 
hyper fun, mm -hmm. hyper sexual, hyper like, mm -hmm. ah, like, you know, no, life is fucking crazy and amazing and weird and strange and, and, and something to be celebrated, not something to be feared or something to be like mm -hmm. angry about or something to be like bitter about or whatever. Um, so it, it's a very special, it's a really cool record. It's, it takes you on a journey and we wanted to make it feel like sex. Basically, we wanted the people Which to listen great. to it. We want <laughs> we want to be, like like listen to it from the beginning to the end. Feel like they just got like they had sex. Whoa! And it's not even very sexual. I'm, I'm... It's like like <laughs> mind blowingly like what like that. Just, <laughs> you need a cigarette. You need a cigarette Whoa. after. I have never heard anyone telling me that their album feels like sex. So that's great. <laughs> I, mean, I can't wait to listen to it. <laughs> It, it the, the album the album fucks you. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> I love that. I love that. <laughs> it does. It really does. And when I played it for my manager, he was like, he was just like, wow, you're right. I felt like I got sonically like altered. You know what I mean? Like he said the F word. And that's exactly what I want we wanted to do Wayne and I and also Luigi OG shout out to Luigi OG I am ADHD he helped to uh <laughs> produce this record as well well he'd be really upset great. if I didn't I mention him wait. okay so well I can't wait to, to listen to it so when is it gonna be available uh what's um, the release date I'm just gonna say summer okay summer okay summer yeah I, I have right. a lot to do. I mean, now I'm just like panicking as I think about the things I have to do because I wanted to to make a CD first so people can buy the CD first. Mm -hmm. It's really one of those records you have to play from the beginning all the way to the end. So I want to make sure mm -hmm. I have a CD first. I have a record. Um, but it's still being mastered right now. If I wasn't such a perfectionist, I would have released it a long time ago. But I'm crazy in that way. So mm -hmm. um, I hear your That's baby. Great. Your baby. Oh, yes, yeah, it's my, it's my baby, uh, Rudy. Mm. Cute. Oh, sorry, it's my, she's one and a half year old. So, yeah, she's, she's a little upset right now. <laughs> my husband okay. is taking care now. So, um, my next question, who would you like to work with? Uh, like, uh, to do a duet? I have one artist that I love so much right now. Her name is Charlie XCX. I love her. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, I know who she is. Yeah, I was like, who? Yeah, I know. Charlie. From Boom Clap. Yes. Yep. Boom Clap. Oh. I think she's the mm -hmm. biggest, awesome, awesomest pop star in the world right now. And I she love her writing. And you guys would make a very interesting um, collaboration because of her style and your style. That would be like pretty cool. Yeah. I have a feeling she would know where to take it like i just feel like she knows her shit like she knows pop very well mm -hmm. i like her a lot okay. oh yep great and now another question that i always ask all of my my guests who is your favorite male singer david bowie david bowie and yes. your favorite female singer Madonna. Madonna. Your favorite boy band, not No Authority. <laughs> the Wanted. The Wanted, okay. Wait, wait, mm -hmm. am I getting that right? They, they had a song called... Uh, the song goes... Da, 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 and all oh, yes. the girls is here and now. My universe will never be the same. I'm glad you came. Whoever sang that song, I'm glad uh, you came. The, they're called the Wanted. wanted. They're called the Wanted. Yeah. That's my favorite mm -hmm. boy band because okay, they sang yeah. because they sang that song. That song is so fucking sexy and amazing. I love it. That's a yeah, boy band. Pretty, that, to me, yeah. to me, the, the the reason why I like them is because they weren't really they transcended the boy band like cutesy bullshit like they just like made like a record and it's it's like sexy mm -hmm. and like it's fucking hot like 
I love yeah, that. I don't really. Yeah, I they think have very cool songs. When I think of NSYNC, it's just like such bubblegum, like whatever. And same with Backstreet Boys and, and No Authority. I'm sorry to say. I mean, we had some really good songs, but like I felt like the wanted, like really they they made a record like for like a like a a male can just sing that song just by itself or like a female. It's just like mm -hmm. it's hot. It's not like a yeah. group song. It sounds like a does that make sense to you? I also like yes. five. <laughs> I like five, baby when the lights come five. out. I like Baby mm -hmm. When the Lights Come Out. That was hot. That was sexy. I like it when boy bands get a little bit more sexy, but like I can really, I believe them. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Because I feel like a lot of the, 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 they try to like pretend they're sexy and everything, but they're really not. Does that make sense? They're just like, they're really not mm -hmm. that interested in, in stuff like that. But I felt like five, I believed them. When they said Baby When the Lights Go Out, they're going to fucking bang you and do it well. Like I believe them. I was like, okay, all right, cool. <laughs> that's great and now your you. favorite girl and your favorite girl girl group tlc you're the second one to mention me tlc tlc forever i love TLC. okay and now a uh, question that it's always difficult for some but some also answer it like super easy if you were dropped in an island all by yourself and you can just take five of your favorite albums with you. Which ones would you take? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I would take Madonna, Ray of Light. Mm -hmm. Madonna, Music. Mm -hmm. I would take Prince, Purple Rain. Um, oh, God. Yeah, I don't even know. I have to really think about this. Oh, I'd have to take a Bowie record. I would mm -hmm. probably take Reality. That's my favorite Bowie record. Mm -hmm. And then if I, who else do I love? Michael? Maybe I would take Dangerous. Maybe. But I would need, I would need something really complex in order to just digest. So probably like a Pink Floyd record. Okay. Across the Moon. I would need something to kind of like really marinate on forever, like have like this like really dissecting thing. So I think mm -hmm. like a Pink Floyd record or something. Interesting Crossing choices. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It didn't take you so it didn't take you long to answer that because some of my guests is like, oh my god, why are you asking me this? It's so difficult. But you were easy. You were easy. <laughs> it's pretty hard. It's pretty hard. I know. I know. But that kind of well. encompasses my sound, though, if you think about it, um, yes. as Ricky Rebel, because mm -hmm. you got those Madonna factors, which is very pop. Mm -hmm. And then you got the Prince thing, where I, where I add a lot of guitar here and there, a lot of Prince vibes, Bowie. And then, of course, like this Pink Floyd thing that come, pops up, because a lot of some of my music is kind of complex, and I like to keep it, keep people guessing, and especially the new stuff I'm making. Oh, my God, I'm so excited for you guys to hear it. Um, That's great. my new new stuff so I've already made an album called Wild Reality I already have another album that I'm working on and that stuff is crazy experimental as well so some fun stuff coming up I, I, I decided I was going to step away from politics you know the whole mm -hmm. you know I, didn't, I wasn't really like in politics but I was like in, in the conversation you know what I mean the culture, mm -hmm. the culture war um, I'm not interested in that anymore now I'm interested in like pretty much bombarding people with music, just like music, 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 constantly, just mm -hmm. all in their faces mm -hmm. so that they understand that I was never a politician. I was never, you know, a, you know, political pundit. I was just saying my point of view because as an artist, I believe freedom is so important. So that's mm -hmm. why I did what I did. I need my freedom. I need my freedom to express myself. And mm -hmm. when I felt like people were trying to shut me up, I, or shut me down or whatever. I was like, okay, now I got to do it more. But I got mm -hmm. it out of my system. It's all out of my system, you guys. You can you can relax. Yeah, I mean, it's okay. I mean, and someone wrote to me when I announced that I was interviewing you that how could I actually dare to interview you when you were a Donald Trump supporter and I'm Mexican and I'm like, what does that even mean? I mean... <laughs> I love you. So, I'm like... <laughs> 
whatever. I mean, it's not like I'm going to be interviewing Donald Trump. And even if I were, no matter. I mean, <laughs> look, it, I had to rebel against that, whatever that isness. I did. And I had to draw a line and I had to say, look, to everybody who thinks that you can like manipulate me or control me by, by making me, it's not going to work. So we might as well like get that out of the way now that I'm not that kind of artist that you could tell me, try to manipulate me and say, if you do this, you know, we're going to hurt you. We're going to cancel you. We're, mm -hmm. I'll do it. I'll do it more. Mm -hmm. That's who I am. Mm -hmm. So, but I got it out of my system. The yeah. whole, the whole thing I got it out of my system. I, I believe in freedom and that's that. And we can move on. Now it's all about like, it's all about, um, I'm, I've, I've realized, you know, I'm a singing, dancing monkey and I have to just really just accept who I am. I'm here to make the people happy. I'm here to entertain you. Not, not like punish, not punish, but like, what is it called when you're, you're like, don't do this or do that. Or, you know, you should do this. I, I forget what that's called. Like manipulated. <laughs> no, like telling people how to live or telling people how to think. And mm. it's like, that's not my job. Like, or I mean, like me reprimand. I don't know what the word is. I, I'm sorry. I can't think of it, but the bottom yeah, line is I, not, I get it. <laughs> right. I'm not here to like, no, I'm here to entertain. And I've accepted that again, re-embrace that. So hopefully that listener, you know, could watch this interview and maybe, maybe get a different perspective on me. See where I, I come mean from. I know. I mean, when I read that, I was like, this is crazy. Why would I reject interviewing someone from their political points of views or religion or whatever? I mean, I'm just having the time of my life with you, Ricky. <laughs> oh, I love you, Marielle. Thank you so much for having me. No, it's been a pleasure. It. I mean, uh, thank you so much for agreeing being here on the show. I want to thank Jordan Lake, who is a, a friend in common of ours uh, for um, getting us connected um we love jordan and, uh, we love jordan lake we love you jordan uh hope great to singer see you soon. Uh, great singer i will be interviewing him next week so um i love him we he's will be so talking cool. yes he's, he's so a great cool. friend and yes so yeah. um thank you so much ricky i hope the best for you i cannot wait to listen to your new album yeah and uh if you guys want cool. to keep on uh ricky's um uh, social media is uh, at Ricky Rebel Rocks. That is a correct statement. At Ricky Rebel Rocks on twi uh, Twitter, Facebook, um, Instagram. Instagram. Yeah, YouTube is Ricky Rebel TV. And if you want any more information on me, go to RickyRebelRocks.com to order CDs and merch. Okay, yeah. perfect. So big hug to you, Ricky. Thank you so much. And thanks, everyone, Thank for you. watching. <laughs> I, I love it. I loved it. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Mm -hmm. Bye. <laughs>